Uh, welcome back, everyone. Council, are we ready to resume? If so. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. We are ready to proceed. Thank you. Uh, welcome back. Uh, Veronique, are you able to proceed with your testimony? Yes, I am. Um, thank you very much. And uh, before we took uh, our morning break, uh, you were talking about being detained at uh, the NIA premises. And uh, you appeared before <clears throat> the investigators on the first day, rather on your second day at the NIA, and they, they, they were recording a witness statement, and you believe also that uh, your words were being recorded through uh, an audio recorder, correct? Exactly. So could you take your testimony from there onwards? What happened after you gave that statement? After I gave that statement, they asked Keba Seka to escort me back to, oh, I've forgotten the name they called that room. I went back there, sat at the hall, and they told me, Bernard, if we need you, we'll come back for you. Did you face the investigators again? Oh, I faced them how many times? Even while sleeping, they'll wake you and say, invest. There was no time for them to come for me. I faced them many times. I cannot remember. And who are the investigators you would face during that period? One of them I know was Kebaseka, Gora, Gora Njai, the other, the other two, I can identify them because we had worked at the port, one we had worked together at the port, then the other, seaport, then the other one we once worked together at the airport. I can identify them physically, but their names I'll miss. Uh, the investigations, um, did you have to face a panel or it was just these few people? There was a panel, but I cannot recall what it, who or what they were comprised of, apart from Kebaseka and Gura, they are the ones I can identify. Did, did they tell you what you were being investigated for? They told me, we have something that we downloaded on the internet, and we want you to shed light on it. So I told them, don't waste my time. Go bring the one that wrote on the internet, then you will know why he wrote on Kibaro newspaper. No, sorry. 
do you were you subsequently charged with an offence? I was charged with four or five counts. Do you recall what those counts were? One abuse of office. Two giving false information to was it a civil servant or to somebody? I cannot recall. Three was it about the vehicle? Let me read out. Uh, you recall that there was an opinion uh, written by a staff of the Ministry of Justice uh, regarding the case against you. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. All right. And uh, take a look at this document. <clears throat> it's dated 14 October. And it's written by a Mr. M. Job from the Attorney General's team. That's the very one. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, if you go through the document, you would see the charges that have been leveled against you. Uh, an example is abuse of office. They are in headings, uh, providing false information. Would you take a look at that and tell us the charges that were made against you just by looking at the headings? The one is abuse of office, as you stated. Two, giving false information to a public servant. Three, unlawful publication. Four, corrupt practices. Five, no, it's four. It's four. Good. So. Did you appear before a magistrate's court? Yes, I appeared before Patu Dabo of the Banyol Magistrate's Court. At what stage in your detention did you appear before this court? Twenty-eight or twenty-ninth day after my detention. Let's clear the issue of the charges first before we go back to the detention. Uh, you mentioned four charges, abuse of office, giving false information to a public servant, uh, unlawful publication, and corrupt practices. These were the four, four charges that were leveled against you, correct? Yes, that's correct. Could you send back the document to me, please? Uh, Madam, would you agree with me that none of these charges have anything to do with the article that was published against you? None whatsoever. And the facts are so completely different? Totally correct? different. Uh, it means, therefore, that what you were being investigated for is completely different from what is contained in the article. Exactly, totally different. Uh, that takes us back to your earlier statement, that the statement that Mr. Dabo gave is identical 
with the article. So therefore, the statement by Mr. Dabo could not have been the basis of the charges against you. Well, in a way, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. But in any case, uh, the prosecution, what happened in the end? The prosecution, when they took me to court, I think after nine months or so, during the trial, when they were about to give judgment, Kebaseka appeared in the scene again. And uh, they had to step down the judgment for, I think, two weeks. What do you mean by they have to step down the judgment for two weeks? Because uh, the magistrate, Fatu, said cases adjourned till two weeks. So we had to go back home and came back on the date that was prescribed. Was judgment handed down? It was handed down. And what was the verdict? They found me guilty on all four. They found you guilty on all four counts? Yes, sir. And, uh, but uh, what you have here, this document that you gave me, was that uh, the Ministry of Justice, there was an opinion of, to the Minister of Justice uh, suggesting that there should be some form of disciplinary action against you, but not prosecution. Uh, because um, the charges are not necessarily directly supported by the evidence. Exactly. Uh, but you, would you agree with me that uh, this is just the opinion of a lawyer in the Ministry of Justice, correct? It is. And that opinion was directed to the Director of Public Prosecutions with recommendations, correct? It is. And you would also agree with me, regardless of the merits of the opinion, uh, some other lawyer could arrive at a different opinion, correct? It might be, yes. And therefore, the opinion that is sent to the DPP was not necessarily the correct statement of law, correct? Exactly, sir, correct. And uh, it was up to the director of public prosecution to accept that recommendation or to reject it. Legally. And if the recommendation was accepted, perhaps the attorney general should have entered a nolly prosequi, which is an, uh, uh, an application to stop proceedings against you. Exactly. Uh, and that was not done. It was not done. Um, so when you were found guilty uh, of all the charges, what disposition was made? I was found guilty on all the four charges, different, different amounts, which came up to 90,000 in default, three years or three years or one year or so in prison, I paid the 90,000, then went home. So essentially you are convicted. Exactly. Uh, you, are, you are fined and in lieu of which to serve a term of imprisonment. Yes, you paid the fine. Exactly. And I you did. went home. home. Uh, 
Now, did you appeal the decision? I did at the Supreme Court, and they acquitted and discharged me. And I also applied for my 90000 that I paid, and it was reimbursed. Good. So no qualms about that? No, whatsoever. You were vindicated by the justice system exactly. that convicted you? Yes. That's right. So in a sense, the initial opinion by the Learned Council at the Ministry of Justice Stands. stood at the end of the day. Exactly. Uh, good. Wonderful. So now let's take a step backwards. No. Maybe I should end with that. Uh, in the meantime, what happened to your job? This case was in 2014. When were you convicted? 2014. 2014. Mm -hmm. Okay. Naturally, with a conviction, mm -hmm. you should lose your job. Wasn't that the case? I lost it before going to court. But how? Tell us that. Because, like, when, when they... When they, when the NIA released me, 28 or 29 days, I went to court. I was bailed, but I was neither told not to go back to the office nor to stay home. So the following day, I said, "Wow, since I'm a civil servant, there's no correspondence that I have in hand. Let me go back to the office." So I went. I signed the register then went to stand outside because I was afraid if I go inside the office, they might think I came to take something away or whatnot. So I stood outside the gate to wait for authorities. When they come, let me tell them I've come to report to work. And what happened? Then the NIA came back for me. They arrested me again. Then I told them, ah, let's go. I went with them again. They locked me back in the same room. For how, for how long? For three, was it three extra three or four days? Extra three or four days. Did then you? they brought my dismissal letter. was dated, was it, was it was September or so? Okay. So you were subsequently dismissed. You went through the legal battle. Mm -hmm. You were initially convicted, mm -hmm. and you were later acquitted and discharged mm -hmm. by the appeal court. Exactly. Uh, good. Uh, so... And your fine, the fine you paid was reimbursed. reimbursed. When, when was this? When the coalition won the election. Was it January? 2017. 2017. January 2017. Mm -hmm. When there was public announcement that anybody that feels that you were illegally terminated, dismissed, or whatnot, right to PMO, so I wrote to them PMO, I attached the legal document, plus a photocopy of the check that I was paid with my lawyer's letterhead. And there were four items that I accompanied with me. I can't recall the, the fourth one. But after, the point I want to make is this, the date during, the date in which the court finally disposed of your case. Was it during the Jame era or the new government? No, not during the Jame era. That's why I said when the coalition came into power, that's when I appealed at the Supreme Court and I was exonerated, acquitted, and discharged. Yes. Uh, I have not seen that document in your stack of documents. Perhaps that is a document that we would need to see. Uh, but following that, following that, 
did you ask to go back to the service? I did. As I told you earlier, when there was that public announcement, I wrote to PMO. There was a panel set up, and that panel included PMO, IGP, mm -hmm. Yes, proceed. No, I'm trying to recall those who were part of the panel. Okay. And uh, they concurred that I should be reinstated. I was given a reinstatement letter. I went back to GRA. I told my boss, morning, sir, I have my letter. He looked at the letter and told me, Go back, I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. So I went back home. Mm -hmm. I wrote to PMO, the originator of the reinstatement letter, mm -hmm. together with the, the then Minister of Finance, that's our line ministry, mm -hmm. the board chairman, GRA, mm -hmm. who that time was Mamur Chain. Mm -hmm. PSA. And I think I copied it also to PSA. So in a sense, uh, there was a letter recommending your reinstatement exactly. uh, to the position you were. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. That's the case, isn't it? It was. Uh, but you could not be taken back to that same position because there was no vacancy at that level, correct? Yes, correct. Uh, and what happened after that? After, I think, one month. After, I think, one month, I got an order letter which read appointment, deputy director, internal audit. So when I read that letter, I said, well, this one reads, reinstatement with all my Jews and salary, this amount, appointment, 6,000, with nothing being said about my services from 1984 till today. So I wrote back to PSC, copied it to the same individuals that I wrote the Earlier, later, up till today, I haven't heard from none of them. But uh, isn't it also the case uh, that uh, you are given 14 days within which to accept the new offer you were given? And I wrote before the 14 days. I replied before the 14 days. Uh, I mean, that is an issue of employment, mm -hmm. and it is outside the mandate of this commission, outside our temporal jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. It is also out of our subject matter jurisdiction mm -hmm. uh, because it's got to do with employment. employment. But that is a matter that you should pursue exactly. uh, with, uh, with, the, with the civil service, or the public service, rather, mm -hmm. and, uh, and try to seek redress mm -hmm. on that. Okay. Uh, but. Mm -hmm. So it means to say, as it is, you are not employed. No, I am not. Good. Uh, so you would uh, pursue that angle, uh, uh, that issue from, some, from, from the relevant governmental authorities. Okay. So now let's go back to your detention mm. at the NIA for the 28 to 20, was it uh, 28 to 29 days, you okay. said? Tell us about that detention. What are the things that happened within, in that detention, during that detention? It wasn't pleasant. Like, when they came for me, I was lying on the floor the whole 28 days. My family did not know where I was.
they would not bring food for me. I was just giving $25 a day for my feeding. And the ladies I found there we are hostile to me. As a lady, I knew I was going to have my periods. I packed my bag to go with it, but they denied me my bag. When I felt like I was Having my period, I told the lady, Anyilau, that is Jam Habi in Jola, them na kasamas, meaning like there was blood. But they wouldn't listen to me. I stayed like that. And what did I do? I was wearing a gown with lapa. I had to tear it. <laughs> to ease myself. <laughs> I stared like that. I told their boss, I knew I was going to have a, have a tough time here, but my basic necessities, you should have allowed me to come with it. Then after about three or four days, I said to myself, let me find a way of going to my home. So I told Keba, you've parked the office vehicle here. And now, let me go get the duplicate at home. There was no duplicate at home. It was just a ploy to get home. So they escorted me to my home in Kotu. I immediately went to my bathroom. I was able to snatch my bag that I had prepared earlier. To go with it to with them. And then when we went, I told him, Keba Seha, they've told me yo, ya rebelila. That's why they, they held you in detention too. You are doing the same to me. But let me tell you, there's a living God. We serve a living God. There will come a day when you will pay for this. Then after about one week or so, those nights, you nearly sleep well. This, Every time, night, this time around, did you allow you to, 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 to go with your bag inside the room where you were detained? No, the bag, the bag I left it at home. But as a lady, if you can kumbe kayo, as we say in wall of something, you can do it. So something to help me, to help me ease my comfort. In those days, every day, they might come for something. Are you suggesting to us that you smuggled the yes. things that you need into the detention room? Yeah, that's what I mean by Kumbi Kayo in Wolof. Okay. All right. Because ordinarily, I will doubt if they will allow me I had to take it, and it was a basic necessity that I needed. And there was a time when I needed medicine. They brought their medic. I think he's Sanyang. I told him, is it safe for me if I tell my auntie at MRC I want medicine because I have issues with my left breast, left kidney, and left ovaries. You people, I doubt whether you'll have medicine for me. 
So he told me, I am a medic. So I told him, no, to my case, suit nala. Like telling him my condition or whatnot, it's above them. So he told me, let me look at your feet. He checked it was swollen. Then he told me, let me prescribe a, a, a pen, not penicillin, uh, forgotten the name of the tablet. He brought it. And when I checked him, I told him, this is coated. I sh uh, it, it should be coated one that I should take, not this one. It's okay. Just try and tell me. Let me get in touch with my auntie at MRC, Eileen. Luckily for me, Auntie Eileen came there. But I wasn't confident to tell her this is what I want because, okay, she'll give it to me, but through how many hands would it pass? Before I get it, I wasn't confident. I just said, let me try and see what next. I told Cissé, Cissé that time he was in charge of the front desk. I told Cissé, your authorities, when do you think they can release me? Because I didn't do anything wrong. And I mean, my condition is not for here. At least let them bail me, as Aegis Chambers have said. So what else? He said, your salon could see noon. Like, your case is not within us. It's, I told him, where? Siko wonder. He said, no, I wouldn't talk, say anything. We stayed like that. Did you have any suspicions as to who was responsible for your detention? Like what Lee told me, Lee, as I said, the one that died, he was the deputy director, NIA. Because when I learned he was in mile two, I took my ID card and told them I want to see Lee. I went, I visited him. I told him, Liz, you've been nice to me when I was at NIA. As a Christian, you are a Christian, I'm a Christian. This should not have happened to you. I told you, Kir Gidu Sakir, in Wolof, I told him, this compound is not for you. Us Christians, we shouldn't, you should not work here. That was when they first arrested me. So when I went there, I told him, look at it. I told him, your feet are all swollen, what has happened? But what I came for is my detention. You were the deputy director, so I want to know, because Momo was Mabaken, you're with Momo was Mabaken. Let me know. So he told me, check your papers or your file or whatnot. They took it out from me when they knew that you did not do anything. We, we, we didn't have anything to hold you there or whatnot. So your case was above me. I don't know. I don't want to say anything or whatnot, but this is it. So I told him, anyway, I pray God for you. That's it. So in essence, you do not know who was responsible for your detention? I do not know. Uh, and. Louis, what Liz. happened, Liz Gomez, or Louis, what happened to him? I think three or four days after I went there, he died. He died in custody? Yes. Where? At Mile 2 Central Prison. Why did you have to tell him? that Kirgi Dusakir, you were a fairly gay? Because he's a Christian, I'm a Christian. What they tell us in church and at catechism or whatnot is against what they were doing at the NIA. What were they and doing at the NIA that was against the Christian faith or Christian values? Eh? The church, it teaches us to love your neighbor as yourself. We have 10 commandments. And 
One, if you love somebody, you don't maltreat him or her. Are they maltreating yeah. people at the NIA? At the time of my detention, when they come at night, they put out all the light and they'll take somebody. Who is, who is they? They, the NIAs, because uh, the, window, uh, the room I was in, I was able to peep one night. I saw one with a black, is it? V, v, VW Polo, or it's a Volkswagen too. Coming there with black, black, who this? Then. I don't understand. The VW vehicle came there with black, black, and hoodies. Could you explain yourself? Yes, with uh, uh, the occupant of that vehicle came with a hoodie. You would not I, be able to identify who it was. And, 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 and wearing black, black. Black, exactly. And uh, they used to allow me to sit just by. They built, their, they built a new office there. They used to allow me to sit there. So that individual came and said, "Your lunch mawa, how my lunch was here, man, do my lock off. Some of them have Meaning my grandfather. So one of those ones." And Bex told me, come and go inside, meaning to lock me up. So I went and locked the door from in so that, like, somebody outside would not be able to come in unless I open for you. So the following morning, we came back to settle in the hall. They told me who they picked that night, and uh, and what they did to him. That continued up to one week. And what was it I that said you? That continued up what, to one week. What was it you understood was done to that person? Uh, the other detainees, they said, hey, him now. I feel sorry for him." He cannot lie down. He, you know, there was pain. He was in pain. Arising so, out of what? As far as you I know? I think beating. So I told Sabali, Anna, oh, you can take like sand and press it in a cloth also and try to massage him or whatnot. So it continued till about one week. One night, was, I was, was that person the only person who was beaten? Some of them, I don't know them. But this particular person, I know him because of his son's popularity. Together with some, some, some other prison wardens. I don't know their names, but they know my grandfather. Because my grandfather was the commissioner of prison that time. When I gave them my grandfather's younger brother's name, they said, I think boss Lawon. That's how I knew them. So it was not only that person who was no. taken out and beaten? No, no. You said that continued for one week. One week. Would you say that so, that was routine? Yeah, I would say so. so. But you were not beaten? I wasn't. I wasn't beaten physically. So one night when I was about to go and sleep, I found them in the room, in that small room that was purposely for me, lying down. I told them, this room is meant for you or for me. Get out. So I drew them out of the room. I told them, Fee, you will not rape anybody here. You will not torture anybody here. I drew them one by one. It, there were three of them out. Then I told their boss, you are their supervisor. I am talking with the, this embassy. Anything that happens to me, it's you together with them. But none of them will sleep here. They are to guide me. But not come and sleep here with me. Look at all my body. You see pain, fillies, whatnot, cockroaches, you name it. They all 
why my body, you know, I couldn't even know what was happening to me. So he told me, you are good for them. We are even afraid of them. Good. Who are those three people? I can recall uh, Adama, Adama and our day were twins. Adama and our Fati, to, together with Aja. Aja was named after the former president's mom. You know, we are neighbors, two streets from me here in Kotu, together with Sise. Then the other gentleman, I, I, I can identify him, but I don't know him. What were they doing there? They said they were staff or whatnot, because if somebody comes, they were the ones that attend to the register. Instead of sitting on the desk, leaving me to stay in the room, they wanted to come in the room with me. I told them, hell no. Do you know whether those people were also detainees? They were not detainees. As I said, they were the ones who were attending to the register. And how did you know their names? During conversation, they'll call each other, Adama, Awa, Aja. Then I said, uh -huh. Aja, yo, Tangade Maka. One of them told me they did, Mayor Bilenko today. So I said, ah, okay. Mayor, Mayor be meaning who? Aja Asombi Boyan, the president's mother, the former president's mother. As I told you, they are my neighbors, so I can uh, recognize them. So I told them, Fi, told them Fi Fanan. Uh, apart from that, did anybody do anything to you while you were in detention? No, no. Okay. So your complaint, therefore, for your victimization is you've been detained at the NIA for 28 to 28 29 days, days mm -hmm. without being taken before a judge or a magistrate, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were you allowed to speak to a lawyer during that period? They did not, because before going to Kanilai, I told my friend, if... I am not produced before a court. After the 72 hours, talk to a lawyer to come bail me. Nobody has challenged Jaya, but I will. So our sister Savali tried, but she was not allowed to see me. She came twice, but they did not allow her until I was produced in court. That's when I was able to. How about contact with your family members? Were you permitted to have contact with them? I wasn't until two weeks that Liz said, gave me my phone and said, call us a family. They bring food for you. I told him, Liz, no, let me use your landline to call. Before I use my line, they say I'm trying to call somebody. They brought food once, but I couldn't eat it. I told them, it's of no use. You were not provided with any sanitary facilities when you needed it as a woman? No, they did not. Did you ask to see a doctor during that period? I told them I want to go to MRC because I was comfortable going to MRC, not to the hospital. But they said Sanyang was their medic. So when Sanyang came, I wasn't comfortable with him. I said, whatever medicine, if even give him medicine, I wouldn't take it. So in a sense, you had no needed treatment during that period? I did not have any. So. Um, it was subsequently you were produced in court and prosecuted. Exactly. Uh, how do you feel about being detained during that period under those con conditions, almost incommunicado for two weeks, unlawfully detained for, for 28 to 29 days, being deprived of the facilities that you needed as a woman? How did it feel at the time? We were very uncomfortable because, I mean, your basic necessities, you should be given your basic necessities. And, I mean, 
what, what else would I say? Everybody is entitled to do what you deserve. I asked for it. I was not using their money. I was using my own just to have access to it, but they wouldn't. I mean, it was just demoralizing. Thank you very much. But uh, subsequently, you are prosecuted, convicted, exonerated, reinstated, but you do not have a job at the moment no. because of challenges within the department. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have no further questions for the witness, but before I leave, I would want to put the documents in evidence. And uh, the first I would want to put in is the Kibaro article, Kibaro news article, um, uh, dated September 1, 2014. And uh, that should be exhibit 129A if accepted. And then the opinion uh, on the case of IGP versus Veronique Carreol, uh, that should be exhibit uh, 129B. Um, the witness also talked about uh, the letters, the correspondence between herself and uh, the personnel management office and government institutions regarding her reinstatement. Uh, I would ask her to take a look at the letters and confirm that these are the letters that she talked about, and then I would ask to put them in evidence. Uh, these are three, three sets of letters, um, and uh, kindly of show the witness. Uh, I have arranged them in chronological order. Uh, take a look at those documents and let us know what they are. They are in chronological order. They are correct. Yes. Could, uh, so could you tell us what the first document is about? This is a letter from me, mm -hmm. directed to the Permanent Secretary, Personnel Management Office. And the subject is reinstatement, copied to the Secretary General, Office of the President, the Commissioner General, Gambia Revenue Authority, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Finance. OK, OK, OK. These, are, these three letters all get to do with uh, your reinstatement in 2018, correct? Exactly. Okay. And uh, Mr. Chair, interesting as this subject may be, uh, 2018 is outside our temporal jurisdiction and it concerns her own employment and which is also outside our subject matter areas of our consideration. So I will not exhibit these letters. I would leave them with her. And uh, I would be contented if uh, the chair accepts the three documents I have just listed exhibits uh, to be exhibit uh, 129A to C. Uh, A would be the Kibaro news article. B would be the opinion from the Ministry of Justice. Uh, and uh, in fact, that's it. Just those two documents, Mr. Chair. And. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Your request, um, uh, then concerning those um, uh, three documents, um, uh, documents is granted. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, and uh, yes, that would be it, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, my Council, and uh, thank you, Ms. Carriol, um, uh, for your testimony and coming to appear before the uh, the Commission. Before I give the floor to the Commissioners. I have a simple clarification I want to seek from you. When uh, the uh, staff members of the Customs and Excise Department went um, uh, to Kanilai uh, to work on the former president's um, farm, uh, were they given uh, DSAs, I mean, 
per diem for the days that they were going to be there. You had mentioned something about voucher in your budget for that. Was the government paying employees, DSA, I mean per diem, to go work on the president's farm? Can you cl cl uh, clarify that point, please? No, we were not paid per diem. Just that, like, they buy our basic needs, food, drinks, whatnot, for us as a group. And accommodation not, in the hotel, you paid from your own pocket? For, yes, from my own pocket, because I wasn't comfortable in living in their accommodation for the general public. And you did know that um, the hotel belonged to uh, Jame? Yes. Did you know that? that? Yes. And you were paying from your own pocket um, uh, money that would go into his bank account? Because that, w that was the safest place to live. Oh, you mean the hotel? Exactly. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioners, if you have any questions. Uh, yeah, please go ahead, um, uh, Imam Jala. Commissioner. Madam Witness. You mentioned unpaid monies that you are supposed to list out. Could you clarify the situation for me? What were these monies for? And why were they not collected? Thank you. These were monies that were supposed to be collected as customs duties. That were goods or services that were rendered to like importers or whatever. And they had documents that showed you owe $1, dollar see, 2 10 But they didn't have somebody else at the institution that would get to them to tell them this is what you have paid, this is what you should pay. It was lying there for how many years? A businessman, you have your goods, you the customs, you give them the goods. Won't you have a guarantee? Give them a time limit. One month, two months, three months. If they don't come to pay, you have a check, cross check or whatnot, pay it. But if you get your goods, customs don't come for you, would you not sell your goods, go import again? Go import again, come. If you don't have somebody getting the whip after you, what would you do? That was my bone of contention with them. I said, this is long overdue. You are going to put me in a mess because if I want to continue and tell them, this is what you should pay, you have forgotten about it or what not. Some people don't like taking out money, but they should take out money because they should. When the person who is supposed to collect it would not come and tell you, what would you do? It was difficult for me, but I tried. I tried. At least I collected about six million out of it. I would not be in their good books. I know that. I know it would be difficult to do it, but what, what else? Somebody must have to do it. And I did it. I have no regret for doing it. And I will do it again if they tell me. Uh, thank you very much. Your earlier warning about the house going on fire, did that eventually happen? I missed them at some point there. Or was it just individuals? This is about the memo. You said the memo, uh, I'm, uh, the house, I'm uh, not like a, And then uh, did that happen? I, I didn't quite get them. Yes. Land you work with, once you work with Ongtan, you know they provided that server for us. They burnt it. Oh, thank how, you. How, how can somebody run a system? You are not controlling it. And that person, they allowed him to work up to retirement age. They did not ever query him because it's kabudu kabudu. With me, they maltreated me at the NIA. Just for me to keep quiet, I told them I will not keep quiet because yeah, jam is time. If I did not do something good, I did bad, I, I know they would have slaughtered me. 
That's why I was trying to check myself during Yaya Jame's era. It's as if I was like standing on a sand mine. Any day it would explode. So I was checking myself. Young Huba messed me up by asking me to write this memo. What I told him was, sir, let's tell the authorities we are under siege. I told him that, let's tell Yaya Jame we are in a mess. Because how can small, small boys illiterate or whatnot, come and penetrate us, take out containers from the port, and you want to tell us nobody knows? Yeah, Jamie was on TV saying that container in container, till they sacked how many customs, police, immigration, and I think NIA, and that was true. Why are we hiding? Let's take it, tell the truth. From there we will have help from people or institutions or whatnot. We are on a siege. Perhaps, Mr. Chair, uh, one issue arising from well, the question you asked is the basis for the arrest, according to the witness, is the article that was written. And the charges that were subsequently proffered are completely different. Totally different. And you were initially convicted of those charges, but subsequently acquitted and discharged. Uh, what is not clear is what was the basis of the charges that were proffered. Uh, perhaps that is for some other day, at some other place, at some other institution. But what remains clear, at least for the purposes of this commission, is that she was detained for 29, 28 to 29 days under horrible conditions for a woman and without regard or respect for the provisions of the law. The, the period for investigative detention was 72 hours within which the person is to be brought before a judge. That was not done. She was not afforded a lawyer. Uh, she was not given the opportunity to communicate with her family and her sanitary needs were not provided. That is uh, the victimization that we are focusing on. Uh, at the beginning, you did state that you were going to sue whosoever was responsible. Uh, I just flag that point and leave it at that. The other point that some uh, involved in her own case concerns some uh, massive abuse of um, uh, civil servants going to work on the on Jamesa um, uh, farm. Mr. Chair, you want to open up false, false <laughs> label <laughs> as an issue? Not at all, but it, is, it, it, it did constitute a gross abuse of the rights of um, these individuals. I can't even agree Even where more. they did it out of um, a fear, as the witness seemed to have uh, implied. I've got to go there, otherwise I'm, uh, uh, I would suffer for it. Very important one, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, if you have witness, if you have any concluding remarks to make, please proceed to this. Oh, uh, my apologies. Um, Bishop, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Madam Veronique Carriol, um, you did mention that uh, the memo that was written to you for you to collect um, uh, those outstanding debts. Um, these were things that were long overdue. Um, uh, did you mean to say that um, they were to be collected before you getting into that office? Can you kindly throw light on that? Exactly, Bishop. They were to be collected before I got into that office. That was why when Young Kuba wrote the memo to me, I told him no. It was Abdul Jalo, Abdul MC Jalo, who was sitting on that chair before me. Let me give him also the memo so that he will sign. And he signed. 
Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Kadi, did you ask for the floor? I thought I saw your um, hand. Okay. Fine. Thank you very much. You may proceed now to make no. any concluding remarks that you have. I don't. You don't have any concluding no. But thank you again very much, Emma, for coming to testify before the Commission. We really appreciate your presence here. I'm sorry you had to endure so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will um, uh, come back um, from lunch break at um, uh, 2.30. Meeting is adjourned. 2.30, Mr. Chair, you said? Yes, 2.30. Okay. Uh, okay. For those who... <laughs> All right, yes, yes, 2.30. You know yes. the... Yes, the yes, I know yeah. the drill. Mr. Thank Chair. you. Yes. Meeting is adjourned.